Hello and welcome to another edition of Shardcast. I am your host, Fotovania, and today I'll be bringing you a exhibition match from a gentleman by the name of Soliton. As I mentioned in the previous episode, I tried to scour the, uh, the masses and try to find some new content to feature here on Shardcast. And this time I found it on YouTube. Normally I find my videos off the Twitch channel, but this time I was looking through the YouTube channels, found Soliton, realized he does some... some quality content and does a lot of content. So I want to go ahead and feature one of his matchups here on Shardcast. It's actually going to be a two episode edition for Soliton. I'm going to feature his first matchup against Damon here on episode 35. And the follow by episode 36 will feature another matchup by Soliton. So if you haven't found his channel out yet, please visit the links below this video here. I'll have a link to his channel there. Make sure you subscribe, check out his content. But in the meantime, we'll get you out to episode 35 here. As I said before, his opponent is Damon, who's playing a Mono Diamond Inspired deck, whereas Soliton's going to be playing a Mono Sapphire Artifact deck. So we'll see how that's going to work out for him here, and we'll go ahead and get you out to the action. Unfortunately, with, because of the way the video was cut, we will not see the coin flip here. But we will get you out there. Let's see here. Looks like Soliton is playing on keeping the seven card hand here. He looks through it. He's going to wish Damon good luck here as a uh, good opponent should. Good sportsmanship. He does keep his hand. It's two Sapphire Shards, a Terabot, Axebot, two Euroid the Roadmancers, and a Technical Genius. So Damon starts us out with a Diamond Shard, followed by a Shield Trainer, which is now the 1-1 one, one, one cost troop that gives plus zero plus one as his Inspire ability. As opposed to the Kraken Guard Mariner, those cards sort of switch texts and powers and whatnot. Basically, they switch card names in patch 823, I believe it was. Or maybe just before that. Soliton draws another Technical Genius and drops a Sapphire Shard. Technical Genius are huge cards for this kind of deck because that allows you to play one less, pay one less resource to play each of your artifacts. Considering that his deck's an artifact heavy deck, that can be huge for him. We'll see here in a second. Damon drops another shard and Kraken Guard Mariner, who's now a 2 3 because of the trainer that deals steadfast for his inspire ability. He swings the one with the trainer, Soliton down to 19. Soliton draws another Terrorbot, drops a shard, and puts the Technical Genius. And you'll see the Axebot go down to 3. There you go. And ter Terrorbot goes down to 5 instead of 6. That's because Terrorbot also, you pay one less for each robot or dwarf you control. So he gets one less because the genius has ability, then he gets one less because the genius is a dwarf. So the Terrorbot now costs five. Damon's turn, drops another shard, puts the Spear Cliff Cloud Knight out, which is a 3-3 troop now. It already had Steadfast, or else it would have gained it from the Mariner anyway. So it's a 3-3 troop with Steadfast Flight and Life Drain. Soliton will face two damage from the Mariner, let it go through. So he's down to 17. Turn three, draws another Sapphire Shard, plays it immediately. And we'll see if he puts the Axe Bot out there. Nope, he's going to put the Technical Genius out. Which will drop the Axe Bot down to two. Terabots down to three each. And we'll see if he plays his champion ability that just lit up. He's playing Bertram Crack Raven, which says for three charge powers, which he uses now. Create a Worker Bot and put it into play. That's big with Yuri the Romancer. Yuri the Romancer is a troop, a unique troop, that says exhaust it, and you can cre either create a Worker Bot put it into play, or you can exhaust the Robomancer and transform a worker bot into a war bot, which is a 3-3 troop, or transform a war bot into a war hulk, which is a 5-5 troop with crush. Damon's turn does not play a shard, instead he plays Blessing the Fallen, which is a constant that says any of your Inspire troops still give off their ability from the graveyard as if they were, they were in play. Normally Inspire works, they have to be in play in order to give their ability off, but Blessing the Fallen changes that, to where even in the graveyard will still give off its ability. Damon swings with the Cloud Knight and the Mariner, so Soliton down, Soliton down to 12. Damon goes up to 23 from the Cloud Knight. Soliton draws a card. It's an Experimental War Hulk, which is a 3-4 Crush Troop. That's pumpable. This time he plays the first Terrorbot, which costs 2. The 3-5 Flight Troop. 
Because it's a, net, a robot itself, the other terabot hand goes down to one cost, so he's able to play both of them for three resources. So he's really ramping up the pressure here. Which is huge, because now he can block the Cloud Knight without sacrificing any of his troops. Damon draws card for turn up to four. Yeah, he wouldn't have to trade because the Terrabot's got five defense, whereas the Cloud Knight's only got three, so three damage from the Terrabot would hit the Cloud Knight. Oh, that's going to change immediately. Damon plays a Bravery, which makes target troop get permanent plus one, plus one. Gives it to the Cloud Knight. I would have thought he might have swung there just because he still get the four life drain, but on second thought, Sultan could have double blocked there and kept both Terrabots on board, so nice choice there by Damon. Sultan draws another experimental War Hulk for turn, plays the Axe Bot instead, which only costs two. Axe Bot's a 2 2 troop that when it dies, you give target troop you control permanent plus two plus two, so a lot of damage out on board. Damon draws card for turn, goes to four, plays a shard, back down to three. Plays Noble Citizenry, which is a four cost two three troop. That one comes into play. It should actually be a three four. Sorry, a 2 4 with Steadfast. It should pick up his Inspire abilities. Which it. There it goes, okay. But also, when it comes into play, you give Target Tribute Control plus 2 plus 2 permanently, which he gives to the Cloud Knight. So the Cloud Knight's now 6 6, swinging. So I'd imagine we'll see Soliton double block here. Because he'd only use. He'd only lose one of the Terror Bots. So he'll get the Cloud Knight off the board, because the 6 damage from the Terror Bots will kill the Cloud Knight. Damon can assign the 6 damage from the Cloud Knight. To both Terrabots any way he chooses. Like he can do 3-3, three, 4-2. Three, He'd definitely do 5-1 here, which he does. Only to make sure he gets one of the Terrabots off the board. So 1-1 one, one trade. Damon still gets the 6 health from the life drain, so he's up to 29. Soliton's turn. Draws a shard. Got 4 resources now. We'll see if he plays the Warhulk or plays one of the Roadmancers. He plays Warhulk. Which again is a 3-4 pumpable crush creature. Or troop, I'm sorry. If you pay two resources, you can give a plus one, plus zero to on a turn. Sultan will swing with the Terrabot, which can't be blocked because it has flight. And the 2-2 two, two Axe Bot, which usually isn't blocked because then, more often than not, you lose a troop out of it. But you give plus two, plus two somewhere else. So Damon making my mistake, playing too much Hearthstone. Oh, I'm guessing because he didn't block with the... Noble Citizenry. That's what my guess, because he would have blocked the Citizenry, killed the Axe Bot, and kept the Citizenry on board. Either way, 5 damage goes through, Damon down 24, draws a card. Damon plays another Shard, down to 2. 5 resources available, plays the Champion ability, which creates an Adamantian Elite, puts it in hand, which is right there. 5 costs 3-3 three, three Troop, becomes a 3-4 with Steadfast, because of the Inspire abilities. So Damon is out of resources because that was a 5 cost troop. Two cards in hand. Can't swing though because anything that swings will die. While he could have swung with the citizenry, he wouldn't necessarily have died. Because he can't pump the Warhawk this turn. Either way, he chooses not to swing. Sultan draws another shard. So he has 5 resources. We'll see if he decides to swing here and pump up the Warhawk. And then play the second Warhawk on a second main phase, or if he doesn't pump the War Hulk and plays the Roadmancer instead. We'll see. 8 damage coming through to Damon. Damon chooses not to block here. So we'll see if he pumps up the War Hulk to put one more damage through. He does not, so we'll probably see the Roadmancer second main phase. Damage goes through. Damon down to 16. Nope. Ooh, here comes the War Hulk. Two resources back. The only thing I think of why he didn't pump up the Warhawk when he was swinging was now the Warhawk he just played is ready to can block. And now he can pump that one up to make it a 4 4 to block. So Damon's turn draws a card, plays Princess Victoria, which is usually 1 2 troop with the Inspire ability of Life Train. Comes in as 1 3 with Steadfast because of the Mariner and the Shield Trainer. We'll see if Damon decides to swing here. He does. He's going to swing the Citizenry, the Elite, and the Mariner. So, Sultan facing 7 damage now. He'll probably block one of them. I'd imagine the Mariner with the War Hulk. Only because the Mariner's been giving all the troops steadfast as they come into play. Which 
proves a problem when you're trying to win on combat damage because that allows them to block after they've attacked because they don't exhaust. Instead, Sultan will decide to block the, the Sisonry. I'm guessing that's why he can, he can pump up the Warhulk, which he does, and kill, this, kill the Sisonry. The 4 damage will kill the Sisonry, whereas the 2 damage from the Sisonry will not kill the Warhulk. So 5 damage will still go through. Sultan down to 7. Sisonry comes off the board. Warhulk has... Stays on board. So 16 for Damon, 7 for Sultan. Sultan draws another shard, plays it, and plays the champion ability, so he becomes another worker bot. He now has two technical geniuses, a Terra bot, Axe bot, two Warhulks, and two worker bots. With two Romancers in hand, six resources available. So Sultan's going to swing Terra bot, Axe bot, and both Warhulks. Which I imagine he's going to buff up at least one of those Warhulks, whichever one happens to be blocked, maybe. So he's posing 11 damage. And you'll see the... Nope, okay, so Damon, one of the cards in hand was Repel, which destroys target attacking troop. So down goes the Terrorbot. So now Damon's only facing 8 damage. Damon still hasn't had to clear blockers yet, so we'll wait to see if Sultan's going to pump before or after the blockers are declared. See, Damon... Deciding whether he wants to block or not. He's got another. If he blocks with the elite, it's dead. However, does he want to take eight on the chin? If he doesn't, he can swing back, but Sultan's got four blockers back. So nothing will really go through. So he decides to block. Princess Victoria will block the axe bot, which means neither will trade. They'll just sit there and deal blows and both will stay alive. Sultan does pump up the one Warhawk that's blocked by the elite, which means the elite will die now. Warhawk will stay on board. So 3 damage goes through, Damon down to 13, the Elite leaves the board, second main phase, Roadmaster comes into play. A unique troop that I said if you exhaust it, you can either create a worker bot, turn a worker bot into a war bot, which is a 3-3 three, three troop, or turn a war bot into a war hulk, which is a 5-5 five, five troop with crush. Damon draws card, goes up to 2. Doesn't play anything first main phase. Attacks with the Mariner. Interesting play, because that now leaves him two blockers back. So Sultan's going to chump block here with one of the worker bots. So down goes the worker bot. Sultan will stay at seven. Second main phase. Damon doesn't play anything. So interesting play here. He now only has two blockers back. Sultan could really do some damage here. Plays the Sapphire Shari draws. So, Sultan's going to swing with both Warhulks and the Axe Bot. Because Robomancer is unique, he's probably not going to play the second Robomancer, which means he can deal, instead of 8 damage, 11 damage to Damon if he wants to, by pumping them up. Alright, so no blockers declared by Damon. So let's see what Sultan does here. I'd imagine he's going to pump... Okay, he's going to... Exhaust the Romancer, turn the Worker Bot in play into a War Bot. So there you see it become 3 3. He has no other uses for his resources unless he's trying to bluff here, so I'm, I'm pumping up my War Hulks as much as I can to deal as much damage as I can. Nope, he only pumps it once, so that there goes 9. Uh oh. 9 damage goes through, there goes Damon down to 4, but unfortunately, I don't think he realized you, your the Pyromancer was unique. So as he played that, the one already on board actually gets destroyed. Let's so go to the graveyard. I mean, I guess that gives him another blocker if he needs it. Damon draws a card and doesn't do anything on his turn, so Sultan will win by Brute Force here next turn. Draws another Roadmancer. Brute Force will go through because he can transform the Warbot into an Axe Bot with the Roadmancer, which would be more crush damage. And yes, he does. So we'll have 5, 8, 11 with crush in itself will go through. He can only block 7 of us, so that will be game. So great game there by Soliton. Excellent first uh, match here on Shardcast. It looks like that Damon's deck would have been okay had the Cloud Knight got done, gone down as fast as it did. It looks like with the ability between the Technical Genius and the uh, Terrabot, 
getting those terabots out that early is just it can really be a pain for a lot of players. So congratulations to um, Sultan for the win there. And again, if you haven't checked out any of his content, go to his YouTube channel, which I will be having a link right below this video. So make sure to check out that that channel, subscribe to it. And also make sure you subscribe to this channel as well as follow me on Twitter. That way you can get notification anytime a new Shardcast comes on. And if you yourself would like to be featured on Shardcast, make sure you send me a line either through my channel or on Twitter, and I'll be sure to try to get you featured. But in the meantime, I appreciate you for hanging out with me today. And until next time, so long.